This is Slasher, and I'm here with Lane Roberts, also nine as Cloud9 Surefour. Uh, Canada got knocked out of the World Cup, unfortunately, before the round of eight. Um, now, I was pretty critical of you guys, I, I will say. Uh, but are you disappointed with how you played this weekend? I don't think any of us are really disappointed. Uh, even though some people might be hypercritical about me picking Huck and Logan the best, I think they actually did pretty good in their roles. Huck actually practiced Reinhardt a lot in rank few prior and was actually asking me on Twitter to scrim as much as possible. So he was really dedicated to it. Uh, I think the only thing that we lacked for this was just the three players not having competitive experience where other teams had more players that had scrimmed a lot more than them. But I'm not really sad about the results. We all played the best we could. We're all happy. Of course, we wouldn't want to go farther. But I think it all really came down to uh, Poke being kind of limited in hero pool wise and them not having that much experience because even though we did have those limitations, we did put up a pretty good fight against both teams. I mean, you actually got a pretty close game against Spain, and they ended up beating Sweeter later in the group. Do you think if you were in a different group, you would have had a better chance of going through? Uh, I think if I was, we were in France's group, which was like France, Singapore, or I, I don't remember their exact group, but I remember France's group being quite easy. So I think if we got a better group, we would have a better chance. So right now, we're actually standing in front of the uh, last four teams here at the World Cup with Finland and Russia playing and then Sweden and Korea in the other side of the bracket. These four teams were kind of like the top four teams that were going into the event. Is it surprising at all to you that this is who's left? Not really. Most of them are all stacked with pros, so it's kind of predictable that they go pretty far. But I think uh, people that everyone were surprised by was South Korea. I guess the NA teams, the EU teams kind of underestimated them and they came out really strong with their teamwork. So come this time tomorrow, who do you expect to be holding the trophy at the very end? Probably South Korea. So there are a few announcements here at BlizzCon that were pretty big. Um, first one being Samra was finally revealed, hacked into the opening ceremony. I called that, by the way. Totally knew that was going to happen. Huh? So did ID. Yeah, I mean, we know. We get it. Um, I got to play her a little bit. I know that you played her a little bit. What are your initial impressions of her so far? I think her uh, 60 bullets is a bit too much at the moment. It's like a machine gun, but uh, I think she's going to be a fun character to play. Her health pack stuff probably not, might need to be toned down because you can have like three health packs like out of the game for like two minutes. So. But she's going to be pretty strong, and I think I'm going to have fun playing her because I love playing flankers, and I think she's going to be a flankish kind of character. Overwatch has seemingly had a tendency to release heroes that are a little bit too overpowered uh, at release. Do you think she's in that current state as of now? I don't think that's necessarily true because when Anna came out, no one used her for the most part. Oh, okay, true, but that's because Zen had 50% Discord. So I don't know if it's necessarily Anna wasn't broken, but Zen was too broken because so nobody would use Ana as much. Well, at the same time, you kind of need to make characters a little bit OP because you kind of want them to be used. But I don't think she'll be too strong. I mean, you're known to have a, a great versatility over all the DPS heroes. Are you really enjoying this? You get another one to practice and to get good on? Of course. I like having another DPS to add to my good at DPS. Well, Sam will be on the PTR next week. We'll get a chance to play her a lot, complain a lot more, see how that goes. The other big announcement this weekend, of course, is the Overwatch League for next year, which has been rumored for quite a long time. Uh, we've heard details such as they're going to be representing cities across the country and maybe Europe. We're not exactly sure how the regions are going to be working. There's going to be a combine and a draft for players to be represented and that there will be uh, player salaries for everybody into the league. What are your initial impressions coming off everything you've heard? I mean, I like the idea of it. Uh, they're trying to do it in a sporty way, and uh, I think it'll help a lot of people that don't have a lot of time to invest into gaming. Like, if they're a good player and they still climb the ranks, 
they just have to like get invited to this combine and like go to it for one day instead of like continually grinding out matches and then like trying to find scrims. But then if you go to that combine, teams will be looking at you exclusively, so you get to show your skill more. And if you're actually skillful, it's kind of just like real sports. You just show it off and people will notice it. And it's just a way to, for people to notice it faster. My only worry is that I don't think Canada's esports scene is that big. So hopefully they'll count me as like Canadian and I can still do it in American cities. But if I had to do the combine thing, I, thought it would, I think it would be pretty fun. What do you feel as a top player who would be earning on the top end of the salary? Is there, is there anything that you're expecting out of this or that you're, you're wanting to see for, for your type of player? Uh, if they're doing it like real sports, I guess like the better you are, the more money you're going to get from a contract, kind of from real sports. But I'm still young, so I'm not quite sure how I should say what would be going on about that. So I like that they have the base salaries for everyone and they'll be playing for team houses. That'll allow like the esports orgs and whatnot to pay more attention to their players and not worry as much about money, for, like spending it on houses, not as much in salaries and probably help them go to events, get better gear and whatnot. So I think it's good. Uh, so to cap things off, there are some new game modes there, including one-on-one -on -one and three-on-three. -three. Are you going to become the best dueler in Overwatch? Yeah, I already am. <laughs> already are, huh? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Well, it is really hard for me to disagree with that, uh, I do have to say. Uh, so thank you for doing an interview. Um, I know there's a lot of fans rooting, out, rooting for you this weekend. Uh, for Canada, and even though you did pass through to the main stage, uh, I know they are still rooting for you. In the future, is there anything you'd like to say to your fans? I'd just like to say thank you for supporting me. If you watch my stream, thank you. If you, watch my t if you follow me on Twitter at C9Sure4, thank you. And I'd like to thank my teammates in Cloud9. All right, thank you, Sure4. I will make sure that police never come for you. Never come for you. This is BlizzCon 2016. I am here for Yahoo Esports. Check in more for coverage later on.